Hello and welcome to Marcodex. My name is Mark and today I'm very excited because today we will be building a Murnoth application that you can use as a boilerplate for your next successful project. Now, this is a part of a series, so be prepared. It's going to be a long series. Um, however, when you finish this series, uh, you will be able or you should be able to not only write a boilerplate, but also learn how to build it from scratch. This application will be a full stack application that has MongoDB as the database, Express.js as the node web framework, uh, React in the front end and Node.js in the server. Uh, let's do a walkthrough, a pretty quick walkthrough for the app, uh, and then we're going to jump to the fun stuff. So uh, as you can see, we have a sign-in page, we have a sign-up page, and also we're going to have a dashboard. In the sign-up, um, I decided to go with uh, my username to be, uh, or creating a username for my application to be the email. I think it's the easiest, the most um, easiest way to validate that this user won't ever uh, have like a duplicate account in a way. Uh, so for example, uh, if, if we wanted to create a, an account and also I wanted to mention that like the cool thing about this app, you're going to learn to build validation. So it will not allow you um, to log in or sign up if you don't have the right credentials. So for example, uh, if I didn't put, um, you know, anything in here, like just put like the word mark and I hit sign up, you will see that there is like a validation ask you to actually put an email in there. And also I have like a validation for my password. So if I didn't obey or, you know, went with the right combination and hit sign up, it will tell me like what right combination that I need for my password to actually, um, you know, be able to successfully sign up. So if we created like a password for now and uh, just hit sign up, we can go to the dashboard. And if we don't want to, if like, for example, we decided to go back to the login page, it will redirect us back to the dashboard, which is great. Um, and also uh, this application will basically have a token that we will uh, follow. And from that token, we would simply just verify if the user actually logged in or not. So we can see uh, local storage and we could see the token right here. And this token is actually our username and password and all the information in here. Now, when you log out, it will take you back to the sign in page and the token got deleted. And if we decided to log back in, Mark dot Mark, great email. Uh, let's do mark.com and then let's put the password. And if we sign in, boom, we get signed in successfully. If we put a wrong password, I just wanted to show you like all the validation that you will be able to build. So if I put like a wrong password, we will see that the login information is wrong. And also if I didn't put, you know, any, any correct username, I don't have like a username called Mark. So also it's going to give us that login information is wrong. So let's get ahead and start coding and start building this application. I'm pretty excited. I hope you are as well. And let's jump right into it. All right. So first things first, let's uh, create a directory and let's call it server. And let's get inside that server and do and run npm in a dash y. Dash y is a flag for just accepting whatever inside that package.json. Package.json is like now we just created our node app. We're going to change a couple of things. We need to add a starting script. And this one will do node index index.js. And also we're going to create a dev script that will run nodemon. And nodemon is basically a tool that automatically resets the server each time you change a file or save a file. So for this looks okay to me, we could, you could change the author, you could change like add keywords, license, whatever, but for now this will work. Um, let's think about this. So for me, I do prefer to create my application inside a folder called source. And I'll create two files. The first one is index.js. Actually, let's move this to the server. And then also we're going to create another one. We're going to call it app.js. Um, this one will contain all the express logic 
Um, I just like to do it this way. Um, it's a personal preference. You could always just have it just one file. It, it will work both ways, but that's my personal preference. So let's start with the app.js. Before we get in here and start adding stuff, let's actually install a couple of dependencies. So Nodemon we don't have um, in here. Nodemon preferably is, you know, it should run only on development. So for us, we need to do, we need to run the D flag so we could just basically run it as a dev dependency or install it as a dev dependency. So we're gonna do Nodemon. Once that's installed, we could see the file is gonna change in here and add that as a dev dependency. Great, so now we have Nodemon set up and ready. Uh, the other thing is that I need to add is actually the Express library and Express package uh, and other couple of packages, which I will list now. Um, and also we need to change the source in here. So we need to say, to give the path, the actual path, because before I didn't have it in source, but now I do, so need to change the path. So Nodemon and Node will read that. And of course, just make sure that node is installed on your computer by running the dash V flag and also NPM dash V. And you could see that I have, uh, for this moment, I have version 14.16 and 6.14. There's, there's a lot of things changed for this version of node. Uh, one of them is body parser, which we're not gonna use today because basically this has got deprecated and now Express has that. We can talk about body parser once we create our app. So for now, let's actually install our dependencies. So the first dependency we want to install is Express. And also we want to add Mongoose. And Mongoose is basically um, an object data modeling. It's for um, MongoDB. It's a library for MongoDB and Node.js. So this is kind of manages the relationship between the data for the database and our node application. For that, we just need to add Mongoose as a dependency. And also now let's take care of the logistics. I wanted to actually log what's happening in my terminal. So we're gonna use a library called Morgan or a package called Mor Morgan. Uh, we need also to use uh, a little bit of security. So we're gonna use Helmet as our secure. It just covers your API calls to the server. So any potential hackers will not see which Express or which, uh, which Express version, which node version you're using. So you don't exploit a lot of these information to potential hackers. Another thing we want to install is cores. We want to allow calls to our server from our front end. Uh, without this, we cannot maintain that communication between the server and the front end. Um, I think for now, this should be enough as a starter. So let's hit run and let's see. So while this gets installed, let's start calling our packages. So the first one we are gonna call express and this one will require express. Uh, another thing we want to do or we want to add is um, our Morgan or our logger. So this one will require Morgan. What else? We need to grab helmet and let's do require helmet and not a hel helmet try. <laughs> helmet. And after that, we want to add the course library, which will require course. And for now, let's just uh, create our app. So this will require express and we just going to activate the express library in here. Also, let's go ahead and add in, let's attach course policy to our app by running this. So once we do this, adding course right there like that, it will accept every uh, request from any other ports. So if we want to have like our front end on port 5000, it, it could basically call this one without um, activating any course policies. You could definitely add, uh, maybe we can add this later. So I'll add a to do, um, maybe adding a whitelist. Uh, the reason for that is, again, it's for security purposes, we can add a, a whitelist that will only accept calls from the front end. Other than that, it will just block it. So 
again, it's not like the ultimate security, but it just another step that, you know, will, will make um, hacker's life a little bit difficult. Um, let's see, we want to add our logger. So we're going to do app.use and then Morgan. And Morgan accepts a lot of um, flags. And one of them, which I want to use is the dev. And the dev basically will allow only logging for the dev environment. So whenever the server is running under the um, development environment, it will log. Other than that, it will not log. So just basically um, a step that I like to add. Another thing now we want to add is basically our URL encoding. So we need to call express dot URL encoded. And this will take extended as true. And then we want to add also express dot JSON. So we because our API is a JSON based, uh, we want to add this as a JSON. You can add helmet as well. So app.use helmet. And this is will basically mask our API calls immediately from there. And then last but not least, um, let's just export this. And so we could just basically call it like that. And in our index, what we gonna do is basically require that file or that app, uh, which gonna do const app equals require app, like so. And in here, I would like to basically create a port variable. This port variable will have um, either values of process.emv.port or um, it's just gonna take 3000 and one, why not? So if the process.env.port um, is basically is not defined, it will take 3001. Uh, this is for you know deployment uh, purposes. Basically, when you set up this, wherever you're gonna set up your server on any cloud platform, it will create, when you run your application on that cloud platform, it will create its own port and it will put it in this process.env object. And let's listen to the sport and run our server. So listen function, it will take two um, arguments. The first one is our port that it's going to listen to. And the second one, it will be basically just a console log. It's a callback. Um, and in this callback, we could see it in the terminal once we run our application that the app is successfully listening to that port. So what we can do, we could just do, actually we could do like a template literal and say uh, server is running on, um, let's put it at like that. So immediately, you could just basically click on that link from the terminal by pressing, if you're on Mac, you could press on command or if you're on a Windows, you could press control and click and it could just basically take you directly to that localhost. I like to add that usually. Um, let's see, did we miss anything else? I don't think so. So failed to save. Yeah, let's override because we made a couple of changes. Oh, oops. <laughs> I made a mistake. Let's do npm install. Actually, yeah, let's do that. I just saved over uh, my dependency. I should have just basically closed the file and opened it again. That's fine. We can add our dependency later. So that's, we got our dependencies in here. And let's see. Yeah, so for now, we, what we can do is simply just create um, a path so we could test our server if it's running or not. So we're gonna say app.get and the get method will take a couple of parameters. The first one is the path that you wanna go to and the request and the response. And from there, I'm just going to do res.json. Uh, and we're going to get a message just, just to see what is happening over there. And in this message, let's add an emoji because why not? And yeah, let's do the stakes. I love stakes. 
Um, it seems that everything looks good so far. So technically, if we run this, it should work. Uh, let me just go over this and see like if I missed anything. And let's do npm run dev since we just created this dev script. Let's hit enter and see what's going to happen. So server is listening. So it seems that it's running um, successfully. So let's actually uh, run this and see what we're going to see in there. And our port is going to be 3001. Hit enter. And boom, we got our JSON. Perfect. So that's the first step. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will continue building our server. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when this next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay curious.